What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Odd Auction Rebuilds where today we're fighting with the Dodge Dart. That's right. We're having we're having some transmission issues. <laughs> uh, the, the shift points are completely irregular. They're sporadic. It's not right. And I just got it back from the dealership where I paid $288 for them to top off the transmission fluid and do a relearn on the transmission as well as an oil change, oil filter change, and putting an air filter in it. Um, the thing is, transmission still doesn't work right. So the guy at David Stanley Dodge told me it's gonna take a couple weeks of driving it and the transmission is just gonna be very, very unstable and unpredictable until uh, it learns its shift points. Now, I don't know if I entirely believe that, so I'm gonna rely on some of you. Surely somebody watching this video knows about these Dodge Darts. Surely somebody works for Mopar, works for Dodge, and you can tell me if that's correct. Cause I saw some videos from uh, a Dodge guy who was working on a Dart. He replaced the TCM, the transmission control module. And he said there was a very specific set of procedures that had to be gone through. Otherwise the transmission was going to shift erratically and it could potentially cause damage to the transaxle. I thought when I got the car back, it was supposed to drive perfect like no transmission issues at all and instead it honestly it drives exactly the same as it did when i gave it to him it's completely sporadic so i went ahead and did some work without you guys um here is the transmission control unit the tcu this is out of the blue dodge dart we're going to swap it out with the one under the floorboard right here that is the tcu for this car my logic says, if this TCU was working perfectly with that transmission when it was in the blue car, it should work perfectly now that it's in this car. There's no difference. This computer, that transmission shouldn't know any difference uh, with it being in this car. Now here's some good news. To get to this, uh, you gotta pull off this little side piece here, this little cap, you gotta pull off a trim piece here, then you gotta pull off this longer floor piece right here, and the carpet just slides back. There's three 10 mils, uh, one right here, then you got, one up here way up here you got to move this wire out of the way right there and it sits sits way up there then there's another one that's way back here it's got a bunch of wires all over it. you got to pop these off as well there we go oops i hit my dang camera there we go once you get some of this stuff out of the way and you get up here what's this this is just kind of like a cluster down, down here, isn't it? There's just... There we go. There we go. Now with all that out of the way, we should be able to get the ratchet up in there, have an easier access um, to getting those bolts out. So uh, here's some good news. This is the floor. Obviously, this is the flood car, right? And the concern that I had was, did we get flood water into the car? Did it, you know, get into the floor pans under the carpet? No, it did not. The interior of the car, the wiring, the control module that's under the carpet, everything under here looks absolutely great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my handy dandy 10 millimeter and I'm gonna start taking, starting with this bottom one here just because it's easy. <laughs> We're gonna start taking these, uh, these bolts off or these nuts, whatever they are. Get these off. We're gonna pull that TCU out. We're gonna swap it out with this one. And before I go bolting everything back up, we're gonna make sure it works um, before I go putting the carpet back down and making sure everything is nice and secure. We'll, uh, we'll see if the shift points are normal when we swap out this control module with uh, the one that originally went to this engine and transmission out of the blue one. Fingers crossed. All right, so now we're ready to pull this out. There we go flip it around and we've got this little tab right here with a big arrow pointing to it i think it's trying to tell us something i think we need to pull this up i'm going to actually just take that out all together sit it to the side it should be able to pull up on this handle and it should release the tcu just like that so here is the tcu that came out of the black car originally um here is the tcu that came out of the uh, blue car. And as you can see, if you're wondering, Hyundai, Powertech, Hyundai, 
That's right. These cars use a Hyundai transmission. This is a 303 version two. This is a 303 version one. Obviously, we got some numbers here that don't look like they match up. Um, that could be a problem. That could be a problem. I don't know for sure. So what we're going to do is we're just going to plug this stuff back in. And we are going to rest it in its, in its spot. And then uh, we'll take it for a test drive and see if the shifts are any better or if we still have problems. All right, we got our little black box mounted. Now it is not permanently installed by any means. I left the wire loose. Um, I didn't put the little yellow clip back in yet. I did, however, put one bolt in. Occasionally, and I don't know if this is the case, but occasionally an ECU, ECM, TCM will ground to the case and it needs a ground to the body, to the chassis. Just in case I put a bolt there, we're gonna leave all this sitting exactly where it is and we're going to take it for a drive and i really hope this fixes the transmission i had no idea the tcu was sitting right under there all right this is the moment of truth either the transmission is going to be good to go or i i'm not sure what the problem is and i'm not really sure what to do about it this is kind of a uh, sometimes rebuilding a car can be a real headache it really can and right now this car is a uh, right now this car is a headache and the crazy thing is there's no codes for the transmission at all the only code for the check engine light is that stupid air dam that is uh, I actually have it in the garage let's see that shifted very smoothly very smoothly Oh, please, please be fixed. The problem we had before is sporadic shifting, lagging. You go to take off and, and it just didn't seem like it wanted to go at all. Let's hit the gas. The shifts are feeling pretty smooth. Let's turn around and uh, actually maybe we can take it down this little road back here. This road looks kind of sketchy. Oh man. All right, let's come to a stop. And just kind of take off normally and see what it does. Before we would experience severe lagging. I don't feel any lagging at all. It's shifting perfectly. Wow. Okay. Give it some gas. I'm truthfully shocked. So far it seems good. Oh man, if that was it and I paid them like $170 for nothing, uh, oh well, let's, let's, I'm going to continue driving it around, let's see how it does. Alright, so as you can see, this one is not a uh, clickbait or anything. The poor dart broke down, I had to push it, and then I had to get an Uber ride. Um, that really sucked, it literally stalled in the street over there and I had to put it in neutral and jump out and push the thing over here to where it is now. Luckily this goes downhill so it made it a lot easier to get over here. I had to catch an Uber and then go pick up the Volkswagen from the detail shop and then get the Volkswagen over to the windshield place. So this thing's been sitting here for a while. Um, luckily I brought all my tools with me from the shop um, so that I could do some work at the house on some of these cars. And uh, I, this should already be disconnected. Yeah, it is. I just got to take this off. What I noticed is a strong smell of fuel. A really strong smell of fuel. Here's another thing. I did not loosen this at all. I loosened this. And look what, look what comes off here. Hold on. Let me see if I can get this off. The dealer, when they put in the new air filter, come on, the dealer didn't tighten it. Look at that. This is a dealership. They didn't tighten that. I loosened this one up here. 
apparently not enough because it didn't come off but i did not loosen this so the dealership forgot to tighten the uh the clamp there for the intake hose now i smelled fuel and i already knew what it was i forgot that when we installed all this <laughs> we had a little bit of an issue with a hose with a one of these fuel clamps the uh, fuel line clamps here's what the fuel line looks like that came out of the other car actually this originally came out of this flood car right here um now there's a clip right here on the bottom that one's fine there's another clip right here that one's fine another clip right here that one's fine but on this one this big one this one the little the little clip it's not even a clamp it's a clip it's a tiny plastic clip this broke i have super glued it back together um i knew what it was immediately and sure enough when i got down in here this hose was blown hopefully you can see that way down in here this hose right here was blown right off of this fuel line and they actually connect to the back of the motor right here i should be able to get to this by removing some of this styrofoam and, and stuff i have to get this get all this out of the way here uh the fuel injectors are under it this foam basically helps to silence the injectors there's more foam under they just load this stuff up with foam man um <laughs> and i i forgot I can't believe, like, this is part of the problem with, with putting your own cars together. Sometimes you forget little things. Can you believe it? It's, it's just, it's a little clip. It's, this tiny clip could have caused a fire. That could have been catastrophic, and that's my stupidity. I totally forgot. I got sidetracked with all the million other things we were doing to this car, and I forgot that stupid little clip. So the transmission was doing great, and then we popped that fuel line, and uh, I called the dealer because I have the dealer right down the street from me. And I said, hey, I need this little clip for this fuel line. This is a tiny clip for this one fuel line. And the de you know what the dealership told me? The dealership, the dealership said, nope, the clips are not available for sale. You have to buy the entire fuel line assembly, both of them combined. And that runs uh, 60 bucks for new fuel lines. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? $60? I gotta buy the whole, I can't just buy the clip. There's nothing wrong with the fuel line. Now, this one right here is an interesting one. You gotta push these two side buttons in at the same time, and hopefully you can see that it opens it up, you can pull it off. These are just regular clips. They just push in and close. And I even believe this clip right here, if you take a look at it, one side, I don't even know if you can see that, but one side has like these little, uh, little divots on each side. And the other side does not. The other side is very sharp, angled, uh, straight. This actually has divots. So this is a one-way directional clip. When you put this in to your housing right here, into your hose, it goes this way with the little uh, shaved off pieces towards the outside. Now I'm not actually gonna put it in, but you put it in this way, and then when you slide it on, that clip is all the way and it automatically locks itself. Those little grooves there give the lip of the fuel line room to actually expand this clip and then lock it into place once it's installed. So that's what I'm gonna work on now. I'm, I'm not gonna do it on video. I'm gonna take all this stuff off and I'm gonna try to replace those lines because I believe I broke this line I did. The side right here is broken. I don't know how well you can see that, but um, I was screwing around with it with a screwdriver. I shouldn't have been doing that. And I broke basically this piece inside here out. So it's never gonna latch the same again. And I'm not willing to uh, risk this. So I'm gonna take this apart. It's getting dark on me. I'm gonna try to get these fuel lines switched out and save myself $60 from the dealer by using the ones that came off of this car to begin with. Everything appears to be good. Try this last one. 
here we go. All right, I got it running. I've double and triple checked these lines to make sure they're holding everything looks good. It looks great, actually. It's wonderful. Perfect. So we can shut her off and put that back in there where it belongs. Bolt this back up. And I think we did a good job. Heck to the yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to try this again, but I think this time we're gonna make it. Boy, the transmission is shifting so much smoother. Much better, much better. Thank you, thank you. You notice the dashboard, we got the lights off with the exception of the rack and pinion light. It's not happy because it's still married to the blue Dodge Dart. The check engine light is on, as I said earlier, because of the air dam thing that I have in the trunk that I'm gonna to try to swap out. That should get the check engine light off. Unfortunately, with the uh, uh, rack and pinion, the Dodge dealer said there is no way to reprogram it. They tried for two hours, couldn't get it to uh, reprogram. So what does that mean? That means we are going to have to take the rack and pinion out of this car and swap it with the one that originally came with it. That means dropping the cradle. That's going to be a lot of fun. I knew this car was going to be good for content. <laughs> so far though, so far we're back on the road again. We still haven't gotten an alignment either. <laughs> this car has been driving very well, aside from the, uh, the, the, the transmission just being pretty unpredictable, but it seems to be back to normal now. Swapping out that transmission control module, which was the whole point of this video, seems to have made all the difference in the world. Let's see how it does the rest of the way home. So I'm about to show you how well this thing is shifting. Before, from a dead stop, we had all kinds of problems, man. Uh, going from first to second, it would lag badly. You'd hit the gas and it would take off quickly, and then it was like it wasn't getting any fuel. It'd fall on its face, and you'd almost have to floor it to get moving. And then suddenly, it would pick itself back up again. And then the shifts were just extremely harsh. And I'm being moderate on the gas, not too hard, but not too light. Look at that, look at the tack, man. And the speedometer. There's no lagging, there's no lurching, no surging. It's just perfectly smooth, like it's supposed to be. This little car had a hard life, but I'm determined we are gonna bring it back to excellent running, driving condition. This little car will be saved or my name is not Uberman. So we made it to the house and wait, what the heck is this? Oh my God, not another one. What are we doing to this beautiful HOA neighborhood? <sighs> Save that for later. <laughs> I ain't even about to talk about that one right now. Oh, and of course the beautiful, beautiful Volkswagen TDI that you guys haven't seen yet. We're not going to talk about this one either. Just kind of a spoiler. Things are finally starting to come together over here. Auto auction rebuilds, ladies and gentlemen. They really are. And I'm happy. And of course, we got the Harley stunting out there in the street. Things are happening. It's been a lot of work around here lately. But what I want to show you guys is this, because I think this thing, although kind of gimmicky, it's actually kind of cool. This is that $300 piece for the front end that's causing the check engine light. This is it. It bolts behind the lower grill. I, I, like I said, I, I think it's gimmicky, but it is what it is, man. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. It literally bolts right behind this lower grill right here. And I think you can see the cutout should be, in fact, it'll be this way, I imagine. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know, I think it's gonna go something like that or Honestly, I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss here. Maybe it'll go something like that. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, um, heck, maybe it'll go, maybe it'll go like this. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm lost. I don't know. But it's got this little, uh, it's got this little motor right here. That motor itself, just this tiny motor, is like $200 without this whole piece. Now, this is a direct piece from Mopar. All right. This was built 4.3 of 19. Like I said, it was $300. Um, you plug it in, bolt it on, and it either opens these little butterflies right here, 
and you can't operate them manually or you'll break them. Um, but it either opens these all the way or it closes them for better aerodynamics. So 300 bucks. This is why the check engine light is on because it can't control the, basically it's, uh, it's an adjustable air dam or an air deflector for the front of the car. That's got to get installed ASAP because I hate lights being on the dash. And then we got to do that uh, rack and pinion. And uh, aside from that, there's one piece that I don't want to buy, but I'm probably going to have to. Um, under here, not this piece, it has this piece, but under the engine right here, you see all that? Yeah, there's supposed to be a, uh, I dropped my mic there, there's supposed to be a belly pan. I thought, oh, it's a piece of plastic, no big deal. Well, <laughs> uh, these cars, and it's the beauty of doing these cars. I truly love what I do, I really do. I know I'm no big time builder. I'm not doing super cars. These, these are cheap cars I'm just trying to give a second life to. and and I'm trying to enjoy them at the same time while bringing what I hope is entertaining content for all you, because right now all of you are paying my bills. Um, I was thinking about getting that belly pan. I was like, no big deal. Was it 100 bucks, 150 bucks, 200 bucks, 250 bucks, 300 bucks? Oh, you're still wrong. From the dealer, it's about $350 for the belly pan because it's a giant pan with heat shields on it. It's got special doors that open up in different places. That's expensive, but it's also very important for the aerodynamics of the car, which is important to fuel economy. Look, guys, I don't want to—I don't want to sell a half-ass car. Now, this is starting to get expensive. You know, two hundred eighty-eight dollars at the dealer for the work that they did, and they failed to tighten that uh, intake hose. They failed to get the transmission shifting properly. That was, in my opinion, kind of a—that's kind of a ripoff. But uh, you know, it happens. The dealer can get the better of you from time to time. The $300 air dam, completely unnecessary to how the car runs. I mean, as far as running and driving, you'll never notice a difference except maybe a mile or two a gallon in fuel economy. Same thing with the belly pan, completely unnecessary to make the car run and drive reliably, but it's one of those things it's supposed to be there and I'm kind of picky about that because I want to, when it comes time, if it comes time to sell this car, I want to, I want to make sure it's right. And I mean, the car will probably never be a hundred percent perfect, you know, but it runs and drives absolutely phenomenal at this point. And this is what it's all about, man. It's about taking cars like the Jetta over there. This car was off to a junkyard, man. It was ugly. The body was nasty. The paint was nasty. Interior was nasty. Windshield was shattered. That thing was headed to a scrapyard. This thing, same thing, man. The whole front end had been underwater. This thing was headed to a scrapyard to be parted out. That's ridiculous, man. We saved a car here. We saved a car there. If we're lucky, we'll save a car here. These are cars we put right back on the road, given a second life, and, and given somebody the opportunity to have a better car than they probably could have gotten from a dealership. And with that little spiel, I'm out of here. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. This video today truly was about the Dart. It's about getting the Dart back on the road because I was really concerned that it had some serious transmission problems. And after getting it back from the dealer and still having the transmission problems, I was really nervous. Uh, I mean, it, it, rebuilding cars is time consuming, it can get expensive, and it can get extremely frustrating when you can't figure out a problem. And when you take something to the dealer and you get it back and they tell you, drive it a couple weeks like this and it'll fix itself, it's like, wait a minute, I've already been driving this car and it didn't fix itself. I paid you to program it and it's still not fixed. And then I watched a guy on YouTube, he's a Mopar guy, you guys probably know him, I don't remember, uh, Twin City something, I, I, I can't remember the name of his channel, he's like a Mopar diehard guy, and I watched him change the TCU, I thought the transmission control module was under the hood with the computer, no, it was under the carpet, and when I saw him pull out the TCU from under that carpet, I ran to the shop as fast as I could, jerked the one out of that one, plugged it in, voila, it took a little bit of driving down the street, but not two weeks of driving, it took just a few minutes going down the road, she was smooth as butter smooth as butter so the build's coming along i appreciate it. we got a lot more to come stay tuned everybody i know i kind of teased you with uh well kind of teased you with this and kind of teased you with the volkswagen we're going to do complete videos on these in the future for the uh what is this thing the equinox stay tuned to tj's auto i will have this equinox on my channel at some point but tim's going to be doing this on his channel so remember tj's auto check him out subscribe because he's going to be starting on this on his own while i work on all these other cars we got so much more stuff going on and we may be closing down the shop in the near future 
So just stay tuned. Uh, you know, things are happening for better, for worse. We're going we're gonna to push forward. I will catch you all very soon in the next one. Thank you for watching and thank you for making what I do possible.